The following program is rated TV M-A-N-O-C. It contains a big pair of nuts directly on your chin. It is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. What's going on, fam? It's your boy, Papa Swolio, back with some more nuts on your chin. In. I know your chins are still warm from the sack, but here it is yet again. There is more of this Instagram nutrition mumbo jumbo that is being spewed every which way. And I'm here to clarify for those of you that really want to take your nutrition seriously and erase all the fucking bullshit and all the smoke and mirrors around it. That's why you're here. Before we do that, make sure to also subscribe to my second channel, Daily Swole Podcast. Links in the card in the description description down below. That way you can catch the live streams for the daily podcast every single day. Daily podcast every single day. You can also subscribe to your favorite podcast app and you can find the Daily Soul podcast everywhere. So I'll put the links in the description down below. Make sure you subscribe. It's growing. It's growing. And we're streaming it the day bitches. Okay. That being said, this account is from a registered dietitian. This is part of the issue. And it's not that someone that has an education or a degree, an RD, and any kind of PhD, it doesn't mean that they don't know what they're talking about. It just means that they have an institutional education. They know how to maybe read research studies. They were taught by the big education system, the machine, and we all know how the quality of the educational system is. You get a lot of biased research, you get a lot of biased instructors and professors, but it doesn't mean that someone knows what they're talking about, and it also doesn't mean that they don't know what they're talking about. So we have to look at each individual individually, okay? That's the way we should judge people, that's the way we should judge people's content on a case-by-case -case basis, which is exactly how we should be looking at people's nutrition from a bio-individuality standpoint. Everyone's gonna be different. Some people are gonna have allergies. Some people are gonna have sensitivities and some people can seemingly get away with whatever they want. Now, this is not a calorie counting debate versus a quality of food debate because both are important. From my standpoint, the quality of the food is absolutely imperative. And also, if you're eating a caloric surplus, you're gonna gain weight. If you're eating a deficit, you're going to lose weight. But there are other factors in just counting and measuring numbers. There's also the other issues and side effects that you can have with food. And a lot of you already experienced some of these things. Move, bitch. whether you have sensitivities with gluten, whether you have issues with high sugary foods, whether you have migraines, trouble sleeping when you're eating certain substances, nightshades, all those little things have their place. So you can put that in the comments below. I'm just very curious to hear your experience with the food quality, the food type, not just the caloric volume. So this account on Instagram, no food rules. Okay, from the name, obviously there's no food rules. In her bio, there's an avocado, a little information desk woman, and it says inspiring food rule breakers. Now me personally, I like to guide people to form better habits so they can break from measuring every last detail. Measuring from the get works for some people, but focusing on food quality from the get works with other people. Of course, caloric surplus or deficit matters, but some people like to approach it from a wholesome food, high fibrous vegetable, more of like habits, cooking better, making better choices in the supermarket, rather than trying to restrict and calorie count highly addictive processed foods. So everyone has their successes and their failures with both. My approach is to first go after quality. That's my approach. And my issue with the quality of the food and the lack thereof in processed foods is not whether or not someone can get away with it. It's not whether or not someone can have a Pop-Tart or a soda and still lose weight or still be perceived as healthy it's because those foods are designed to get you hooked on them. No one's designing apples to get you hooked on an apple. No one's designing steak to get you hooked on steak. People are designing in labs these candies, sodas, high processed foods in order to kind of hit that bliss point of salty and sweet so you just have to grab another one. So you have to grab another one. Chocolate! <laughs> I'd like to buy all your chocolate. So if you're restricting caloric intake from highly addictive foods, you're gonna have that craving, that binge where you just can't, oh my God, you just have to have another one, you just have to buy more, buy more. It's all about money. It's all about money. That's why these companies make food, so you can buy them so they can make money. 
If you think it's about anything else, it's not. It's about making money. Money, business, billions of fucking dollars. So this chick's account, from just the first glance, she's gotta close her fucking mouth. Anytime you look at an account and every single picture is like, with a donut, with the muffin, everything's, how fucking fake is that? Close your fucking mouth. Give some actual content and close your fucking mouth. But that's just my opinion, that's just what I see, and I just don't like that kind of whitewashed bullshit. So, she goes on to have all these posts that really, really grind my gears. They really get under my beard. So she has this one, for example, go through a couple of them, healthiest cereals to eat. Whatever cereal sounds tasty as fuck to you. Really? That's good advice to people that are addicted to food? That's good advice to a population that is suffering from absolutely astronomical issues from type 2 diabetes and obesity? This is a good post? Understand that most people aren't going to have this objective, higher education standpoint where they can dissect and understand what you're trying to say. They look at this and be like, wow, I can eat any cereal that I want. Good idea. No, they're very high in sugar, they're very fucking addictive, and a lot of people are going to consume things that have other side effects and other issues that they should be avoiding because they don't have proper healthy fucking habits. That's why they should be coming to a registered dietitian, but this is an example of why they should not be coming to this person. And then you have other posts, other socially appropriate PC posts, like having curves is okay, not having curves is okay, judging others' bodies is not okay, and of course you got the standard, judging others' bodies. Look, this is social media, this is human communication, you can judge whatever the fuck you want. Humans judge all the time. Judge all the time. You judge danger, you judge the weather, you judge all the time. You're always assessing your surroundings and you're always formulating opinions to protect yourself, to go hunt, like whatever it is naturally from an evolutionary standpoint and whatever you're doing in your daily life. You're always assessing and judging. The issue here is not what someone is doing, judging other people's bodies. Judge whatever the fuck you want. What needs to change is the individual that's being judged needs to not give a fuck what other people are saying. You have to wall yourself off. Who cares what someone else says? If you are secure with yourself and you understand who you are and you are comfortable with yourself, it doesn't matter if someone else can judge. Let them judge because they're going to. So get over it. And then she has another one. If you eat donuts fast enough, your Fitbit thinks you're running. <laughs> so professional for a fucking registered dietitian. Then her next picture, eating fucking donuts. Lie. You can't have a burger and a bun at a barbecue. Truth, a burger with a bun is delicious and patriotic as fuck. Yes, processed carbohydrates for people that have issues with processed carbohydrates. Good move. Calories at a barbecue. Just eat whatever sounds delicious as fuck. These are bite-sized little shit nuggets that you will find on Instagram because when you're scrolling, it's easy to look at one of those infographics, pick up information, and move on. Not everyone reads the captions. And the captions are bullshit as well. They just facilitate the picture. So you have a picture of whatever fucking mayonnaise-infused potato salad. You have potato chips. You have a greasy bun-processed burger. You have a shit-fucking hot dog. You have watermelon. Watermelon melons, fruit, love watermelon, and then you have a cookie. So at a barbecue, just eat whatever the fuck you want. Eat whatever sounds delicious as fuck. Really? Really? This is coming from someone who claims to be a registered dietitian. Do you see the problem here? This bothers me. If you have everything on lock and you are willing to eat junk food and you're fine because, you know, once in a while eating something shitty, you're not gonna fucking get diabetes, you're not gonna have cancer from one fucking thing. You know, there's a lot of chaos and stuff that we're not aware of in this life. We're not aware of every single nuance of every single variable that we introduce in our lifestyle. But I don't think you should be telling people to just eat whatever the fuck sounds delicious. You think that's good? For people that are addicted to fucking food, you jabroni or jabronette. <sighs> Healthiest carbs to eat. Stop overanalyzing. These are all freaking fine. So let's see what she's comparing to as being the same. They're all fine. A sweet potato, a regular potato, bread, triscuits, or whatever, wheat thins, whatever the fuck that is, some kind of rye bread, pasta. Okay, some people have major fucking issues, and it's not just people with celiac, it's people that have gluten sensitivity, and millions of people suffer from this. Maybe you are not one of them, but a lot of people are one of those people. What I'm trying to do here with my channel, my content, you have to understand your 
individualized nature, your individual gut biome. You need to understand that you can test these things. You are not the same as her. You are not the same as someone else. You're not necessarily the same as your mother, your father, your brother, and your sister. You are you. And you have to understand you are in control of your nutrition. You're in control of these decisions that you make. And you're not subject to how you feel you can change that, you can improve. For some people, they might be able to be a little bit more lax with their nutrition. Other people, you really have to fucking dig in and take stock in your own health. You are not at the victim of just whatever is available. You have a choice. Everything you fucking put in your mouth is a choice. It's your choice. And if you're having issues, you need to understand that these are not all the same. They're not all the fucking same. They're not. Why? Because they're fucking different things. Look at them, the picture. They're different fucking things. It's that simple. This is how I cut carbs. Oh, she's so funny. She cuts them. <laughs> Binge causing foods. Whatever deliciousness that you restrict is the deliciousness that you binge. So don't Restrict yourself from foods. Hey, don't restrict yourself from alcohol, you alcoholics. Just drink whatever you want. If you restrict yourself, you're gonna really crave it. So just have at it. You think that's a good thing? No, it's not. And some of you might be saying in the comments that, well, alcoholism and getting addicted to processed sugar is not the same thing, but there are a lot of similar responses and similar properties in the body. Addiction is addiction. And if you look around, no matter where you go, people are obese, they're hooked on this shit, and they can't stop. They cannot stop. A lot of you, and I want to hear in the comments below, and I'm not saying, I'm not taking a side per se, but I'm just, this is how I think. I don't understand how someone who claims to be a nutrition professional would just freely post this stuff because a lot of people just see this and move on. It's important to understand your audience. And I think she's fucking completely missing the mark. I understand not being tethered to a scale. I don't measure and micromanage my food, but I also have a lot of experience and I know what my body reacts to. I know how much I'm eating just by kind of guesstimating. And that's how I live my life, it's my choice. So if you wanna eat junk food, you wanna have cheap meals, you wanna eat donuts and fucking chips, that's on you. I mean, I can't control you and it's your life. You make your own decisions. But from someone who claims to be a registered dietitian, who claims to be promoting positivity and health and body image and all this other shit that you see on her page, don't binge shit just because you want it. Don't just indulge because you want it. No, you're not a fucking grown ass child. You're not a dog. You don't deserve treats. Like this is why people are already fat because they're not restricting themselves and they fucking need to. Sugar in fruit. It doesn't matter. Just pick what you like. Sometimes I like my fruit in a muffin. Sometimes I like my sugar processed. Sure, why don't you put fucking candy? Why don't you put soda? Why don't you put alcohol, which has seven calories per gram? Why don't you put that? This fruit, grapes, an orange, a fucking apple, a piece of watermelon, a strawberry, it's not the same as a muffin. Those things have fiber, phytonutrients. There's other benefits to having a piece of actual fruit than there is to have a fucking muffin that was made in a fucking laboratory. Who knows what kind of muffin? She's not talking about making it in your kitchen. She's, you could just be buying that at a fucking store and you don't know what the fuck is in it. Biggest waste of calories. The only wasted calories are the ones you wanted but didn't eat. So fucking what? Eat every goddamn fucking thing that you see? You wanted to eat it, but didn't, but you should have. So next time, make sure you eat everything. Make sure you eat that burger, the fries, the cookie, the fucking chips. This chick is brain dead. This is like a good natured, good hearted, good intended scam. It's bullshit. And the reason? Because people that are promoting all this kind of crap, it's not helping anyone. It's not. Like we're getting sicker. We're dying. The country is dying. Most people don't realize how close to a fucking economic collapse we are because of healthcare. We are on the brink and it's gonna happen with student debt and student loans and medical debts. Like we, it, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And it's because of this kind of shit. It's not because of vegetables. It's not because of steak and potatoes. Oh, but the animals, but the, this, uh, oh, vegan. It's not because of real fucking food. It's because of sodas, liquid calories, processed calories that people have a real hard time restricting because they are designed to cause lack of restriction. They're designed for you to binge. That's what they want. If you binge eat them, you'll buy more and they'll make more money. You're fucking making it rain on these food companies. It's such common sense, it's embarrassing that you put RD after your fucking name. I'll finish with this one. 
the best foods for PMS. Now, I'm not a woman, so ladies, you can drop what you feel down below. I know you have cravings, and I can't imagine fucking bleeding every single month. That sounds like it sucks, and I'm really glad I'm a dude, and that has nothing to do with sexism, but having a period really sounds like it fucking blows. So a lot of sympathy for dealing with that. Best foods for PMS. You're already in pain, bleeding, and moody. Don't be more miserable. Eat what you want. You got a picture here of whatever cream jizz covered carrot cake that is, a cookie, you got Skittles, you have other cookies, you have chocolate, and you have chips. You can binge and eat whatever you want on your period for two days and destroy your entire dieting and your caloric restriction for the past two weeks. It's so easy to go over in your calories for three days, four days, whatever you deal with, however length of time is that you deal when you're on your menstrual cycle, ladies. Two or three days going five or a thousand, 500, a thousand calories over your required intake because maybe you're in pain, you're not exercising, you're not expending as much energy. So you do 500 to a thousand calories more for a couple days and you eradicate everything you've done maybe in the past week or two weeks. So. Yeah, go for it. Don't be more miserable. Eat what you want. Every time you have your period, just fucking binge and then wonder why you're bloated. Wonder why you have extra fat you can't lose. This is a fucking problem. This is just, just evidence that Instagram fitness and Instagram nutrition and just what people put out there on the internet, you need to scrutinize this shit. Just because someone has some letters after their name, it doesn't mean they know what they're talking about. And it doesn't mean that they're providing information, albeit maybe with a good intention because of all the pictures, it doesn't mean that it's going to land with the right people because everyone's looking at this. People that are addicted to food, everyone's looking at these pictures and although maybe a couple people get the message because they go deeper into your funnel, but more often than not, a lot of people see this as an excuse to eat garbage because someone with a degree or a credential says so. So let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you enjoyed these nuts on your chin and I hope you keep an eye out for more of this bullshit and feel free to send me anything else along these lines that you see because this is rampant, it's everywhere, and I really hope that this stuff cleans up really, really soon. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe also to my second channel, Daily Swole Podcast, so you can enjoy the knowledge cock every single day, live streams every day on the Daily Swole Podcast channel. You can also subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. Links in the cards in the description down below, and I'll see you next time for some more nuts on your cheek in. Peace. Fucking bullshit. Every fucking time I go on Instagram, every fucking time, I see more of this shit. Who's that fucking happy every day? Who's that happy? How fake can you get? At least show one picture where you're grumpy. Turn that vibrator off for a fucking second. Every picture, you're like, Zzz.